Hi everyone, in this part we're going to analyze how we are able to leak kernel pointers to userland and why it is happening, where we could have found it and how generally you approach this kind of problem when you want to leak kernel data to userland. And once we've done that, we'll easily show how we can return to userland. Okay. Let's get started. So we have seen it in the previous lab, but we are going to summarize how the kernel information leak works. And so we have the kernel parsing our fake userland enlistments. And at this point, because there is nothing like the SMAP mitigation, the kernel just has no way of knowing that it's no longer accessing kernel memory. So it's just going to be modifying things as if it was normal kernel memory. But now it's not, and the kernel will just be modifying userland memory that we can access to from userland. Also, keep in mind that the KTM structures have inline structures, which is basically that the kernismen has embedded structures like the K mutant. And so initially, most of the fields will be zeros because we provided them from userland and we didn't specify any value. And so once they are changed by the kernel, it will be easy to notice as suddenly they are not zeros anymore. And if you look closely at them, you should see some kernel pointers. And so as you can see, we have our fake user and kernismans k mutant that is touched by the kernel. And so it's mutant list entry is leaking us two kernel addresses. And so we can see one ending with AE58 and the other one ending with EB30. And so if we look at what objects these addresses correspond to using the bang pull command, we see that the first leaked address points to a case thread, which is actually the thread calling TM recover resource manager. And the other entry in this linked list points to a K resource manager, which is actually the K resource manager pointer passed as an argument to the same TM recover resource manager function. And so why does this happen? So basically when entering the vulnerable function, it will log the K resource manager mutex. And then when the main loop is processing the user land enlistment, it will actually lock the K enlistment mutex and later before sending the notification, it will unlock the key resource manager mutex. And after it returns, it will relock the key resource manager mutex. And so basically each time it locks a mutex for the key enlistments at a given iteration of the loop, it would have just locked a key resource manager mutex at a previous iteration of the loop. So the question is the mutexes we are talking about are from two different objects, right? a K resource manager and a K enlistment. So where is the K thread address we managed to leak? And so what happens is that a given thread will have its own internal link list of all of the mutexes that it holds at a given time. And so by first locking the resource manager, an address relative to the K resource manager is added at the end of the thread doubly link list. And because it, it will be added to the end of the list, the next pointer of that list, which is the fling pointer, will point to the thread itself. And the previous pointer, the bling pointer, will be pointing to another mutex object that we don't know anything about, but that was previously at the end of the link list. And then by locking the userland enlistment, an address relative to the userland k enlistment gets inserted onto the same doubly link list of other mutexes that are held by that thread. And because it will again be added to the end of the list, the next pointer of that list, the, the fling pointer, will point to the thread itself. And the previous pointer, the, the bling pointer, will be pointing to the previous object that was at the end of the linked list, which happens to be the K resource manager, because that is the last object that had its mutex acquired for that particular thread. So one thing, we can see in the loop is that actually the k enlistment mutex is unlocked. And so the k enlistment will be removed 
from the thread's doubly linked list so the Keanismo mutex won't appear in the thread list anymore. But what matters here is that our username Keanismo is still going to have its mutex field pointing to the previous mutex, which is the K-resource-manager mutex, and pointing to the next mutex, which is the K-thread mutex. And this is because removing the Keanismo mutex from the thread list only updates the adjacent elements in the list, but not the actual enlistment elements that is removed. And so basically, if we look at the implementation of KE wait for single objects, we will see that it ends up modifying a bunch of the fields inside of the mutex object that is passed. And in our case, we are passing a controlled userland Keanismant mutex. And so we control the entire mutex fields. And so we can specify certain fields, flags inside of that memory to make sure that certain code paths are hit. And so the mutex argument that is passed to ke wait for single object is called object. And so there are different types of mutex. And so we can specify that the mutex is of the mutant type, specifically for instance, to skip the first if loop. We can also set the object header signal state to be more than zero to enter the second if condition. And for instance, we can set the signal state to one because then signal state becomes zero. So we'll avoid the go to branch and we'll continue. Then we see additional code. And in this code, current thread is a pointer to the current case thread associated with the recovery thread executing in the TM recover resource manager loop. And so the code sets the object on a thread to the current thread, to this thread, which means we can leak it from userland. What is interesting is that the honor thread of this mutex is set to the current thread. And this is different from the actual leak that we saw earlier in the doubly linked list. So there are technically two ways to leak the K thread object. And later in the code, our K mutant pointer, which is the object variable is inserted into the current threads mutant linked list, which is the mutant list head. And it happens to be the case that after insertion, the object flink entry will point to the address of the K thread mutant list head, which is the head of the mutants being held. And the object blink entry will always be the K resource manager structure associated with our resource manager as it was the last mutant locked by this thread. And so one question that could come to your mind would be, how do you know how to set all these fields to trigger the information leak? And I think the answer to this is a mixture of trial and error, but also luck. And so by trial and error, I basically mean to reverse engineer the code around the vulnerable function, as well as the function being called by the vulnerable function, looking for certain code path that would allow to either leak kernel pointers and or get a right primitive. And I think in our case, all of the fields that needed to be set happened to be set anyways, because originally what we were trying to do was to use one of these functions to find a way to get a right primitive. And so we had set a bunch of these fields that you can see here and here, saying that the mutex was signaled and we we're following path. And then you basically end up in this code path that ends up writing a lot of data into the mutex. And so in this case, we only noticed that it was happening in the debugger when we were printing the contents of our fake user and canismants with the dt command. As we could see, there was a kernel pointer written to our user and canismant. So it is just to show that there is not like a written methodology and just sometimes you end up finding things on the way. And so the thought process is basically just, okay, we know we control a canismant in userland and we are stuck inside this loop. So we just want to start working as many different pieces of the code as possible 
either in Windbag or Ida or Ghidra. And sometimes you see something, you dig around and you see, oh, this may look like a, a right primitive or something kind of cool in Ghidra, but you want to make sure that it's real or you want to see how that actually manifests in the debugger and if you can actually hit that, that area of code. And so a lot of the time, you'll just set up memory and then just single step to see where you go. And then for instance, in this case, we wanted this code path to hit and then we just see all of a sudden we are leaking addresses. And so, yeah, this is basically what it looks like to trigger the leak. Basically, you just need to specify in the dispatch header of the k-mutant structure in your k-nismant that the type of the mutex is a mutant object. You want to set it to the signal state by setting, setting signal state to one. And then it will not only set the honor thread field of the k-mutant to a value relative to the k-thread, but it will also set the mutant list entry flink and blink pointers respectively to a value relative to the k thread and to the k resource manager and then you can fairly easily compute the base address of the k resource manager from userlen since you can read the leaked data from userlen so again we can test that the notifiable flag has been unset to know that this particular leak enlistment has been parsed by the kernel which means that it will have the leaked data and then you just pull out the pointer, which points into the linked list entry, subtract a certain amount to get the K resource manager base address, and then add another amount to get the Anisman head. And then you can use the Anisman head address you have just computed into a new escape Anisman. You can just basically inject an escape Anisman into the trap Anisman, and the recovery thread will escape the loop at the next iteration of the loop. This diagram is exactly the same as an earlier diagram we showed, but now you should be able to understand it entirely. So now, in theory, what we have is at least one trap enlistment that points to the primitive enlistment. And in this case, one of the primitive enlistment would be the leak enlistment. And then that leak enlistment would point to another trap enlistment, which then eventually will point to other primitive enlistments to possibly build a right primitive and elevate privileges. And then at the very end, you will inject your escape enlistment in order to exit the loop cleanly.